hello friends this video is on the thyroid gland the basic physiology of the thyroid gland and thyroid hormone okay so let's start the thyroid gland is made up of follicles there are many follicles now in between the follicles there are uh, para follicular cells and some of the RBCs okay so now let us give uh, give a quick review that the here inside the follicle there is colloid okay which secretes a protein which is known as thyroglobulin okay thyroglobulin now remember it for now no. these are the para follicular cells which secret calcitonin which is not our prime concern okay and these are the RBCs which bring uh, iodide that we take from food to the thyroid gland okay and the main process of uh, secretion of the thyroid hormone takes place in the epithelium of the follicle that is uh, follicular epithelial cells okay so the secretion of the thyroid hormone takes place in the follicular epithelial cells so for now i will just magnify this each one cell and uh, show you how it at the molecular level how this happens okay. i have made a, a slide so that we can save some time so this is the follicular cell okay now this is extracellular fluid that is blood I mean uh, blood comes from uh, here and this is the colloid that I showed you in the previous diagram okay so let us now see how it happens okay all you know that uh, for a uh, synthesis of thyroid hormone we need iodine and the recommended daily allowance for iodine is 100 microgram per day okay so we take it from different sources in food which uh, is digested in the GIT and comes uh, and goes to blood and then blood takes it to the thyroid gland after it reaches the thyroid gland uh, the follicular cell uh, up, uptake the uh, iodine iodide, uh, iodine is in the form of iodide which is an inorganic form okay the follicular cell just uptake it and this process is known as iodine trapping iodide trapping okay understood now once the iodine is inside the follicular cell it is in it is in inorganic okay so now it uh, has to go to the colloid so who, how does this go there is a transporter known as pendrain which transports the iodide to the colloid okay pendrain <coughs> now after it reaches the colloid as earlier i told you that colloid secretes the thyroglobulin okay thyroglobulin has a, a tyrosine on its surface now the iodide is incorporated to this tyrosine by peroxidase enzyme oxidase enzyme okay and after this incorporation uh, there is the formation of monoidotyrosine and diadotyrosine MIT DIT okay suppose this is tyroglobulin this is MIT this is DIT okay so because of the iodide uh, the and because of the peroxidase enzyme the iodide was incorporated on the tyrosine which was on the surface of the thyroglobulin which was secreted by colloid okay now different uh, thyro uh, thyroglobulins with uh, MIT and DIT they bind to each other and form T3 and T4 understood by uh, suppose DIT binds with uh, MIT to form T3 and uh, DIT with DIT to form T4 likewise uh, 
T3 and T4 are formed. Now, once the T3 and T4 are formed, okay, they then again enter the uh, follicular cell by actually they are endocytes that is engulfed by the follicular cell okay now they are in the follicular cell now they are not uh, they do not come individually on the follicular cell they are actually bind here also they are bind to the t3 and t4 are bind to the tj okay and as is as such they are engulfed now inside uh, the follicular cell now they are cleaved by action of proteolysis okay so here now the iodine is separated and t3 and t4 are free now they are released in the blood after going to blood Mm, they have three different routes now let's see what happens to t3 and t4 in blood okay. now, t4 is a pro hormone okay so some part of the some of the t4 are converted to t3 by mono d iodinase T4 is flow hormone and some of the some of it is uh, converted to T3. Now, next some of the T3 and T4 bind to a protein okay, uh, known as thyrosine binding protein. Okay, some of these bind to the protein and rest are are all in the free form so what does it do after that now t3 and t4 that are in free form goes to various uh, organs and act on them so and do their function so what are their functions let us see first of all t3 and t4 regulate the base cell metabolic rate okay secondly they help to regulate the long growth of long bone okay. helps to regulate the growth of long bone thirdly uh, they are helpful in neural maturation and also they act uh, as uh, they sorry they increase the sensitivity of the body to catecholamines that are beta adrenergic okay and there are many different functions of the thyroid gland so now uh, let us see uh, how this process activates uh, here is how it activates in brain there is hypothalamus okay which secretes thyrotropin releasing hormone trh thyrotropin releasing hormone okay now this trh goes to anterior pituitary and acts on thyrotropin cells okay now the as it acts on thyrotropin cells uh, the anterior pituitary secretes now thyrotropins thyrotropins are the main thyroid stimulating hormone tsh these were trh which was secreted by hypothalamus and these are the tsh which are secreted by anterior pituitary okay now the, this TSH goes into the blood and this, that is it enters the blood and goes to thyroid hormone uh, sorry thyroid gland and stimulates the thyroid gland okay so uh, there is, suppose this was the follicular epithelial cell so here is a receptor present for TSH so the, this TSH goes here and binds to this receptor which activates the production of TG from colloid and also start the trapping process and iodide is trapped okay understood so this is how it is regulated
Yes, I want to show you there is a negative feedback. Suppose the T3 and T4 uh, value is more in blood, then by the negative feedback, uh, it suppresses the hypothalamus to secret the thyrotropin releasing hormone. Okay, so because of this, then uh, there will be decrease in the TSH and there will be decreased production of hormones. Similar way, if uh, it is low in the serum then there is a positive feedback which increases the secretion of TRH and it is increased ok so this is the positive feedback now let us see some of the disease associated with thyroid hormone thyroid gland these are hormone ex hormone excess hormone deficiency and hormone resistance so let us see one by one if suppose this t3 and t4 is more in the blood it is hormone excess it causes grave disease multinodal goiter adenoma and subacrothyroiditis well if it is increased it also causes Hashimoto thyroiditis and atopic hypothyroidism and it is uh, there are some conditions in which the body is resistant to the thyroid hormone these are thyroid hormone resistance syndrome and monodiadenase deficiency which i have told you that monodiadenase converts t4 to t3 okay so its deficiency is also um, a disease so, and so some symptoms so this was the thyroid gland and i will uh, separately discuss all the diseases in my next video okay so now it's done conclude the video and thank you for watching